Good afternoon, beloved. Hope you're having a great day today. It is a bright, sunny day. It's going to be, for the most part, from my understanding, a bright, sunny week with highs in the mid-70s, uh, lows in the 50s. Man, you can't ask for better weather in North Carolina than that this time of year. And part of me is distinctly hoping that it will last on into uh, the summer because I, as you well know, just despise hot weather. Today, I, I want to take us down a line of thinking. <clears throat> and uh, the line of thinking really began um, yesterday. Uh, as Matthew Bird and I were having a conversation about education and educators and um, this weekend I had to go up to Richmond uh, to Union and Eliza was with me so I got to show her Union for the first time and on the way back I was thinking about education and and the fact that I'm at Union and yesterday was uh, the anniversary of my graduation from Carolina and and I, I go back to something that I often come to and I, I think to myself how did I get here how did I get here and there are lots of people who came in my path who got me where I am um, but today I want to focus on two uh, one is a guy by the name of Brock Ridge. And unless you're from Richlands, you don't know who Brock Ridge is. Well, there's lots of ways you could know. But folks from Richlands of particular generations would definitely know who Brock Ridge was. Because he was uh, the principal at Richlands High School uh, for 20-some years. Um, he taught at Richlands before that and um, just is a great guy and in the summer of 1992 he hired uh, another guy to teach um, academically gifted students English uh, at Richlands a guy by the name of Brian Cox and Brian Cox was from Randolph County originally uh, graduate in 1991 from Duke, uh, got a master's in 1992 in teaching and came to Richlands to teach um, in the fall of 1992 in which a, was the year he got a freshman uh, from the corner of New and Wilmington Street. Brian Cox And the fact that Brockridge was our principal and Brockridge was very instrumental in, in everything that went on at our high school are two people that I can point back to and say I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Because Brian Cox made us read things and Brockridge held us to levels at the school of excellence that were unbelievable. But but Brian Cox made us read things that, that children in... in Richlands would have never read. For instance, The Myth of Sisyphus by Camus, which I absolutely hated. He made us read Native Son by Richard Wright, which has had a profound impact on my life since then. He took us to places that most of us never would have gone and he caused us to think, to think, to think beyond ourselves, to think beyond our understandings, to think beyond the, the, the geography of where we grew up, beyond what um, we may have believed, and to at least think on things bigger than us. And so when I hear about banning books and things like that, I get a little nervous because I think back to my own life, how being exposed to some things made me who I was am today and how I think. And I also, that's part of the reason why I so value public education. 
because I am a product. And I wouldn't be where I am, where I've gone to Duke and to Carolina and now to Union if it wasn't for it. What does all this have to do about spirituality? Well, number one, I think, A, we should have people in our life who cause us to think beyond what we think normally. Who stretch us to take into new things and new considerations and new ways of thinking. We should always have those folks in our life. But more importantly, can you look at your life and say you're that person for someone else? Are you the person that's, that someone can say, you know what, if it weren't for them, I'm not sure I'd be here today. It requires a lot on us. It requires us to be studious. It requires us to be thinking. It requires us to be stretching. But it also requires us to be putting ourselves out there so that we can be that person to someone else. To think that what we have gained in life is not simply for us, but for others. It is very much an image of Christ who stretched the minds of his day and, and how he went and, and taught and did and who, who told his disciples to go make disciples, teaching them what I have commanded you, which is this expanded realm of thought. And it is what is left to us to do. I am who I am because of a lot of people but Brian Cox and Brockridge are at the forefront of who I am today. And why I read the books I read and why I think the way I think. And it doesn't mean that I always agreed back then with, with Brian Cox. No, and Brian and I very much disagreed on lots of things back then. I maybe now would come to his side of thinking, but I don't know that. Because he left after three years, too, I should say that. He left and went off to law school. But I am forever thankful for them. You, beloved, have to go make disciples today and be that person to someone else to cause them to see the world differently, to think differently, to act differently, to... to expand their minds and allow themselves to be stretched that's your calling that's what a disciple maker does and a reminder that we are a disciple making people because if we don't do that we're failing the task say mark where does jesus stretch people well for no other point to go then to the sermon on the mount where jesus says you have heard it said but i tell you you have heard it said, but I tell you. You have heard it said, but I tell you. He was continuously stretching and pushing. So last week I ended with, go be like Jesus. Today I'm going to end again with, go be like Jesus. So that you can, can be that person who stretches. That someone will mention your name like I still think of Brian Cox and Brockridge. See the light. See the light, beloved. And let us come out of our caves to stretch the world to have a place where love and grace, the message of Jesus, can abound. I know, a little different today, but it's what's been on my brain. So, until later this week, Thursday, if everything goes according to plan. I know it's the Memorial Day weekend's coming, and so I'm going to propose summer reading for you, give you some things I've been reading and some things I'm going to read and encourage you to take a look at it. Until then, go be Jesus. And remember, grace abounds. Blessings to you.